Uh, today we're gonna talk about uh, your bathroom renovation, which uh, I believe compared to the square footage of the whole house, is the most expensive uh, room in the house. And uh, it's better you do your homework before you decide to do it. Uh, I believe first of all, don't hesitate to ask questions about your options, about the different kind of material you can use, because these days there's a lot in the uh, different material, different design, different finishes in the market that uh, I believe you can find out when you start shopping. Uh, and uh, ask about the specs and uh, before you go shopping, it's better to get your measurements. Get, find out that uh, how much it's gonna cost you an average bathroom and based on your budget, don't waste your time to look around for the high-end material. Don't get confused when you're choosing them. Uh, and uh, as soon as you find out the measurement and if it's, everything is a standard size, then uh, you're good to go. We can uh, ask at least three different contractors to come over and give you an estimation for your project and ask them about the different kind of material they choose. They can uh, show you the previous jobs pictures, they can show you the actual uh, material, or they can uh, invite you to their showroom to take a look what, uh, what are your choices. And uh, first we're gonna start uh, with what kind of uh, material is necessary in a typical bathroom. First of all, it's a uh, tile you choose, and then uh, what, uh, uh, what's your style? you want to go classic or you want to go contemporary or you want to go modern and uh, when you uh, know your style then uh, you can choose your uh, different kind of material such as uh, uh, I'm talking about the tiles we, we can uh, choose a natural stone which means uh, you have to pay more and it needs maintenance you have to seal it you have to reseal it every other year and uh, uh, but for the, uh, uh, the best choice these days is the porcelain tile. It comes in a lot of different kind of uh, finishes, shapes, and patterns. And based on the size of your bathroom, if it's not that big, you better go with the less pattern and the lighter color and a bigger size. And uh, when you go with the bigger size, it means less grout and uh, less maintenance easier to clean up, and uh, different finishes means uh, a matte finish or satin finish or uh, glossy. Uh, mostly for the walls, they choose uh, glossy because it's easy to remove the soap scums, uh, mold and mildew, and easy to maintain. And for the floor, uh, it's a no-no because it's so slippery, it's very dangerous, it's better go with the matte finish. Most of the tiles these days uh, um, comes with the same pattern, same color, but different finishes, or you can choose completely different tile for the wall. Uh, you can go with the ceramic or uh, with the um, uh, porcelain or with the uh, porcelain sheet, which is the best. It's big, it's uh, no uh, grouting, no gap, nothing. But uh, whatever you choose, there's a basics for the contractors that has to be considered is uh, waterproofing. There's a lot of different kind of uh, waterproofing and materials for that, uh, that uh, you can go with the Kerdy, which is a, a foam wall covering and floor covering. And obviously it's a new product and uh, you cannot use a regular mortar for that. It's a special, it costs a little bit more. But the traditional way to do it, it's a cement board or a dense shield or those kind of material which has to be waterproof with the liquid material. They, they do that like a drywall, it has something at the back uh, uh, like a fiberglass and then they do the red guard on top and make it completely waterproof. It has to be done properly because even the tiniest spot is a cause of big damage later. And uh, when it comes to the faucets, there's a different kind of faucet for the sink and the shower. 
For the sink, there is three typical uh, um, um, faucets. One is the uh, three hole, uh, six inches, three hole, eight inches, which is more classic. And the one handle, which is the easiest, and uh, most of the design these days comes in one handle. It's so easy. And when you choose your vanity, make sure that the faucet is matched with it. Because sometimes the top of the vanity comes with one hole or three hole. It has to be matched with your faucet. And uh, about the toilet. When you choose a toilet, there's a lot of different kind of toilet. And uh, um, it comes with a, a slow closing uh, seat, uh, a skirted or regular, but make sure that uh, beside the uh, cosmetic, a skirted is so easy to clean up. And the tank, inside the tank, make sure that it doesn't get con condensated. It's lined, some of them are lined, it has a styrofoam inside, but some of them are glazed for this purpose, which are the best. And uh, it doesn't get sweaty in the summertime. And uh, you can add the bidet to it, uh, the bidet is addictive, you know. <laughs> and uh, if you don't, don't have enough space for the bidet, you can use the uh, heat, uh, you can use the washlet, which goes uh, in, in, on top of the toilet instead of the toilet uh, seat. Uh, it, it comes in heated, uh, it comes with a remote control, it's, you know, you control the pressure, it's a self-clean, and obviously it costs more. And when they want to install it, they need the uh, power cord for it. They have to do the uh, electrical work for that too. And uh, for the flooring, uh, for the subflooring, there's a lot of different kind of material. And uh, I, I can show you the tiles. This one looks like a wood, but it's made of porcelain, it's glazed. It's very durable. It's, uh, uh, it doesn't get cracked easily. It doesn't get chipped easily. Or if you... With this one, you can use it for uh, with your uh, uh, modern choices. You can use it with the classic choices. It's very popular. It's a light color, but at the end of the job, you see a lot of pattern. If your bathroom is big enough, big, uh, with a pattern or uh, no pattern, it doesn't matter. But if it's a small, choose something that is light and less pattern. And uh, if you want to go with the uh, more modern material, you can choose something like this. It comes in the 12 by 24, uh, 24 by 24, which are the uh, decent sizes these days for the renovating your bathroom. And uh, even the tiny things like uh, paint uh, is very important because it has to be, it, uh, recently there's a kitchen and bath uh, uh, paint and there's a bath and a spa paint. Bath and a spa is better and uh, it's mold and mildew resist, it's, uh, it's actually washable. You can clear it up easily. And uh, yeah, different kind of material that you can choose uh, uh, in the market. Uh, it's a little bit confusing, but you, do, you have to do your homework before you start because you don't need a headache later on. And uh, it happens a lot because it should be realistic and based on your budget, uh, a bathroom can go, it's like buying a car. If you want to go with the basic, we cannot expect to get something full featured because uh, you can go with a, a regular mirror or you, you, you can go with the LED mirror, if with the defogger, Bluetooth, and all this stuff, which is gonna cost you, like a mirror gonna cost you a few thousand dollars. And, uh, I don't know, these are technical stuff. It's, uh, I don't know if it's important for you or not, but check while they're working, while they're doing their job there, the level is floor, uh, the, the f uh, floor is level, and uh, they choose a different kind of material to do that. And, uh, but make sure at the end, uh, especially inside the shower, uh, everything is okay and uh, it's waterproofed, in, uh, everything is uh, based on what you're looking for. 
And uh, I think the other stuff is, uh, it takes more time, it's more, it needs uh, to discuss based on your space. And uh, it's better you invite uh, the contractors to come and see that and get their measurement and give you exact estimation. And uh, yeah, when it comes to the vanity, uh, you, you, there's a different kind of vanity when it comes the, to the tops, the same story. Uh, the vanities are uh, like a, uh, um, free, uh, like a wall mount vanities and uh, regular vanity, the, the drainage and the height of the drainage and the plumbing is different. If you're uh, the, trying to do something modern, you have to consider all these uh, details. But uh, as I said, these are not the things that you decide. You, you decide just about what you want and uh, your contractor decides how to do it. And uh, yeah, I, I cannot think of anything else. I'm a little bit stressed. I've never been in front of the people before. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that's it. And uh, we, we are at unit 111. Uh, we can uh, uh, talk about your project specifically. Uh, whenever you have time, come over and we can uh, talk about the details and uh, set an appointment to see each other. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, so first, I'm Daniela. I'm here representing Canaroma today. Uh, so just a little bit about Canaroma. We are in business for more like 40 years. And we basically try to uh, always bring some to our customers news, uh, new designs, uh, all that uh, functionality. So basically, we have two showrooms. One is here, we have four units here at Improve. And we also have a main store between 400 and 401. There we have, uh, it's like a 20,000 square foot showroom. So we have selection of tiles, slabs, bathroom fixtures kitchen fixtures and uh, a good selections of vanities as well. Uh, we have just like from Italy around 100 vanities that are exclusive. So when you're looking for something different, something unique, uh, that's uh, like a good way to go. Another thing that we try to do uh, that I find that's really nice, it's try to have some vignettes so basically some rooms set it up. So you can go there, you can see how uh, the vanity will look like. So you have more options and you can actually visualize um, different kinds of um, designs. Uh, so today I'm gonna talk first the preparations that are needed for the bathroom renovations. I would say that the first thing you have to do is do some research. So like here, for example, is a good uh, place to go to see what's available in the market because it's not all about trends. Sometimes what's trending is not really what you like or it's not really what's going to work for you. So it's always good to take some time, go see what's new, uh, what are the new finishes, the new materials. Uh, for example, one thing that it's um, very nice right now are the sling shower bases that you can have like a slate material, so it's gonna give you like a stone look. And for this material, you don't need any waterproofing. It comes all together, it's super, super easy to install. Uh, it's gonna reduce the cost for if you're doing like a walk-in shower and you can always get like that super clean, super modern look because it can be flushed, so you're not going to have any slopes on your bathroom and it's going to reduce your cost because it's waterproofed already. It comes with the drain integrated. You don't need to do extra tile work. You don't need to pay your contractor to do all the, this work. It's something that you can use to reduce your cost and still get that nice look. Um, another thing that you have to, to be aware of right now, mainly, is lead times. So sometimes you go, you find something, oh my gosh, I love it. 
but then you have like one week. Like we cannot do any miracle. <laughs> Sometimes it's gonna take time to get what you want. So it's always good when you're planning a renovation, go, go to some places to try to find what you like. Of course, we can always, let's say you find something you really like, but it's not available. We can always, always try to find something similar. But if you want a good brand, good quality, if you want to exactly that look, it's always good to go and do it with, with, with time, right? So what we try to do, we don't do any installations, but we always work with contractors, we work with designers, so we can try to help you uh, trying to find what you're looking for, the functionality you're looking for, because this is another good, like important point. Uh, it's not all about the look. The look is very important, but we, you always want to make sure that's gonna work. So what kind of sink I'm gonna use? Is it for a powder room? Okay, maybe a powder room is not like everyday use, so you could uh, put like a vessel sink, like a nice piece, like kind of a show piece. Uh, but if it's something that you're going to use every day, you're going to be focusing more on, uh, okay, I need more countertop, maybe I need a makeup station, maybe, uh, you know, there are so many options available, you just have to find what's the right one for you. Uh, but talking about like what's going on, the trends that um, we are, have seen now, I would say that people are doing a lot of walk-in showers. That's been something that people are realizing that's much easier to use. Or sometimes they're using a walk-in shower, but with a freestanding bathtub. So uh, you can have like a, a very nice tub that you can relax, but you also have like a walk-in shower that is just like more functional, like for everyday use. Uh, another thing like about toilets that uh, people are doing a lot too is uh, the smart toilets. So you can have all in one piece, is all integrated. You don't have any tanks, so you, give, you can have like a really nice look. And at the same time, it has all the functions of um, a bidet, right? Um, another thing that uh, it's been very trendy, it's uh, when we talk like about design, I would say people are going more for a modern transitional look. But again, it all comes to you. Some people, uh, I've seen even like traditional styles, a lot of people love it, and love, a lot of people, they hate it. So you have to really go and see, and see if you like it or not. But we have seen a lot of new finishes. So gold, it's been a trend right now. Uh, again, it's a special finish, so you probably want to go in order with time if you want to do like something different. Uh, but black and gold looks very nice. So you have a lot of vanities with like the solid uh, black finish with gold, uh, which has been something that people are doing a lot. Um, what else? So uh, another thing that we also have, um, so basically the owners of Canaroma, they usually go once, twice uh, per year, they go to Italy and then try Italy, Europe, basically all Europe. They go to try to bring some news. Uh, one thing that we do have like a good feedback from the, from the customers is with uh, vanities with glass top. So a lot of people, they're gonna say, okay, but glass top, it's not durable. But actually it's the opposite, it's very durable. It's super easy to clean. The only thing you have to consider is getting a good quality because a lot of people, they had bad experience with glass top because it starts crash, is scratching in the bottom because the paint is not well done. So at Canaroma, we've been selling like glass top for more than 20 years. And because usually it comes from Italy, they know how to really paint it so it does not scratch. And it gives you like a very nice look, very modern. So uh, it's uh, something that you can take a look to. Um, what else? <laughs> uh, we also have the largest collection of big tiles. So large tiles. We have um, a lot of options, for example, for slabs. 
Um, even if you want to do like a book match, which looks very nice in the bathroom. Um, so these are all things that right now are like super trending. Um, I think, yeah, I think I covered basically everything. Uh, the only, another thing that, uh, you have a question? <laughs> Be good. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, so, when someone is having a situation, I know you mentioned um, the, the obstacle that a lot of people have where they want to get going right now. You know, I want to get my bathroom done before Christmas, right? Uh, I don't have time to, to wait. What, what do you guys offer that might be an option for people who can't wait or don't want to wait? That's a good question. Uh, so what we do have, we have, we try to keep a good inventory. So when people really need it like ASAP, we try to show whatever is available. So usually the first thing I ask when someone comes to me uh, and they find, oh, this is really nice. The first thing I ask is, okay, how long, how much time do you have? How long can you wait? Because if not, it's going to make my life complicated, your life complicated, and contractors, designers, every, everyone is going to be like, okay, what now? <laughs> so can you delay the delivery? Let's say I, I see something that I really like. I want to buy it, but I'm not going to use it in two months because mm -hmm. I'm planning, right? Mm -hmm. Can I order, pay for it, and, and keep it there until I, I need it? To Absolutely. It? Yeah, absolutely. What we can do, uh, so that's why time frame is really important because some faucets right now, like there is one brand that's made in Canada, it's very high quality, like good materials. They do a lot of options, a lot of finishes, but can take up to four or five months. So yeah, what we try to do, like if you go and you order six months before, but you're just gonna need six months later, we see what's the time frame with the manufacturers. So let's say your tub is all available. So we don't need to order right now. We're gonna like order one month before. So when it comes, you're gonna take it like, it's gonna have some time for you to take it to be sure that's gonna be there, but you, you're gonna just secure it, right? So you just secure it. And if it's something that we stock, we just keep it for you. If it's something that we have to order, we plan the time to ordering. So we always try to keep, uh, because another thing that's going on a lot right now is price increases. So for, if you order now and six months later, sometimes it's, exactly. So we try to check, okay, maybe if something that you order, like it's gonna have a price increase, we try to see, okay, if it's a small piece, maybe you can take it and like hold if it's something that's big so we can see how long we can hold for you but we try to always based on the project we try to to always work out for you so yeah <laughs> um, something I hear a lot from different clients and um, just people that are looking into renovations in, in general is if I'm going to get fixtures mm -hmm. and let's say um, I'm looking into some of the fancy ones that you guys carry, how easy is it for me to get parts? Because I know if I go to Home Depot, I can get American Standard parts. Mm -hmm. I know if I go to you know, some of these places, I can get Mullen parts. Mm -hmm. And you know they basically give them away for free. Mm -hmm. So what is the advantage to getting some of the European options as well as you know if something happens, yeah. how easy can I get parts? Yeah, but Actually, you mentioned brands that are well established. So that's one thing, because sometimes you go, you buy a brand that you never heard of, you never know if they're gonna have any customer service. So it's not, you have to be aware. If you are choosing a brand, make sure that you're choosing a brand that has a customer service. Like we have a customer service that we always help people because problems happen, it's like, it, what you have to try is just try to minimize the chances that you're gonna be stuck with something. Let's say you did a whole renovation, you put like a nice shower, and then one year after the cartridge is gone, what you're gonna do? 
like if it's a brand, like we, we do carry American Standard too, we do carry like Moen, uh, we carry different brands, so we have different price ranges. It depends on uh, how much you are willing to spend. But these brands, if something happens, they're gonna provide you. They have usually a lifetime warranty. That's something you can always ask. Like, always ask, okay, what's the warranty? Every brand has a different warranty. But usually, uh, the brands that are well established, they're gonna provide you with cartridge, with replacements. Of course, the finish is different because sometimes the finish depends on how you use it, how you're cleaning it. But when it comes to the solid part, which comes like cartridge, hoses, all this, you can always, if it's a good brand, you can always get replacements and usually they send it for free. It's just like, go talk to them, make sure you keep your, like the receipts and everything and you're, you'll be fine. But that's a very good point, actually. Um, any other questions? Yes? Hi. Like you said earlier about walk-in showers, or like it's out right now, and I totally agree with that most part of showers, especially in stone towers, and not the moisture So I, I was wondering, if you wanted to pick a walk-in shower that's for long-term, let's say, it's going to last day and test the time for the tech do you view that as a new fashion where we use that comes in more? Or is it more of a fad where it's maybe five years from now it change? I don't know if I heard it well, but uh, comparing walking showers with tubs, you mean? I mean, it, <laughs> uh, what, what I mean is, do you view walking showers as a fad that may change in five years? Or is it something that's going to stand the test of time that will probably last, retain the whole body for 10 years? Oh, okay. Uh, to be honest, I think the practicality, like the functionality of walking showers, they're like much better. That's why I think people are trying to switch right now. Can you imagine it? You're like you're getting older. Even I sometimes like I'm annoyed that I have to like I never use the tub. Really, really, it's like okay, maybe once, twice a year when I'm like, super stressed, but. Like, it's not something that you're using every day. That, that's why what people are doing, uh, if you have space, of course, you, they put like a um, bathtub, a freestanding tub, which looks very nice, and they put a walk-in shower, because walk-in shower is like everyday use, and then you can even have like a um, whirlpool tub, which is very nice, uh, but then you have both the options, you know? Because uh, for me, it seems like every, like I'm telling the feedback that I have even for the customers, even for myself, that uh, usually without the tub, it's like much, much easier. And it's still the look, even the look when you have like a walk-in shower, it looks much better than like that uh, skirted tub. But again, it depends. Like I'm telling about what um, I'm seeing, what people are asking, what people are telling, but some people, they love the tubs. So if it's something that you really want to have, that you really use, why not, right? But you can maybe have both. If not, you have to think about, okay, what is more important for me? And then you, you go from there. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, any other questions? Any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, I use the microphone? <laughs> I was wondering what the churn rate is. I realize that things last forever, but right now, because people are are uh, sort of living, well, what I was trying to say is you buy something and it lasts maybe three or four years and out it goes because that's the psychology of people. So as far as this is concerned, what is the churn rate as far as how long it lasts if you look after it? Type of stuff, mm -hmm. especially when you get into mechanical stuff like toilets and uh, uh, faucets and, and yeah. that sort of stuff. Yeah, so this is a good uh, question. Uh, again, it comes what you choose to put in your bathroom. Because, for example, uh, this new slab uh, for slim shower bases for the, the, sh the walk in shower. They're made to do to be uh, like to 
dur durability of it is made to last 25 years, leak proof. They have kits that you can fix it, so it's, it's made to be durable. But again, depending on which brand you choose, like if you invest something that you're, for example, materials for the vanity, there's so many options. Uh, you can have melamine, you can have thermofoil, you can have wood veneer. So price ranges are different. So sometimes people go like with the cheapest option, but they don't realize that maybe in three, four years they have to change it because it starts peeling, it starts like looks, because it's a bathroom, right? So the bathroom is where you have more moisturize, you have, it's more sensitive. So if you choose a good material, a look that you like, that's like the look you want. Uh, that's why it's important to like a designer to work with a designer, to work with a contractor that knows how to install. That's the other thing, because sometimes people, uh, they choose something, it's really nice. I have seen lots of people coming back like, oh my gosh, I bought, I got all this beautiful stuff and the contractor messed it up <laughs> because when they install it, they don't install it properly. So it's like you have to work together with the store you were buying from, with the contractor, the designers, to get like all working properly. So we always provide for the designers, contractors, we always provide like the instructions or the specs, what they need to know. Like there is one brand that uh, manufactures vanity. If you're not, um, if you want to save a little bit, you don't want to be totally custom made, uh, but you, can, you want to customize a little bit, uh, we have this brand Vanico, it's made in Canada, and you can choose, actually you can choose the finish, what type of material, you can choose what type of top, and then you, you can like basically set it up, and they're going to send you everything. The lighting is also very important in a washroom, so it's something that you have to do some research, you have to look around, see what's going to work for you, like even the plumbing. Like sometimes you love a freestanding um, floating vanity, but then your pipes are all in the floor. So are you willing to change that? Or you're gonna just uh, maybe switch your ideas and keep, because it's all adding on cost. So I think it, it all comes up in your budget and like the quality of the things that you want to put, because there's so many things that you have good quality, you have a good warranty, so if anything goes wrong, you can still find parts. I've seen a lot of customers like coming back 10 years after. They say, okay, they had like the receipt, they bought it 10 years ago, and like, oh, my cartridge is leaking something, and the brand's still available, they still have the replacement, so you don't need to throw it all away. So yeah, that's something you have to consider for sure. I, I just had another question, because everything is, uh, computer uh, built these days. Is there a price point where uh, you can't go under? I mean, generally speaking, or you're in disaster. Um, for, that, I know it's a hard question, but just generally speaking, say for tax or it is, stuff like that. The the only thing is because uh, I think like for showers. Um, at least like six, seven hundred plus to get like at least a good quality, let's say a cartridge that is all like solid, that you have a brand. So it's at least I would say like seven hundred up so you can get like a good. But again, then there is what look you want. Like do you want a rain head that uh, is going to be a bigger shower head? So it's hard. For vanities, it's even harder. Are you going to do what material? Is, is it going to be custom made? Is it, what's the size of the vanity? Uh, but what you can do, you can go and see what's the options available, what are the brands, what, uh, and try to get the most of it. So we have different price ranges, different qualities, but most of the products we carry is because we trust the brands, because we trust that's going to be something that we, like, we have 40 years. Because, <laughs> so we have to, like the customers, they come back. If we do something, uh, like some bad things, it's going to come back. If you do good things, it's going to come back too. So 
we try to always uh, maximize like you're happy, I'm happy, so everyone is happy. <laughs> That's what we try to do. But yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you so much, much, Daniela. And we will continue with our next. Okay, thank you for your time. Hello, everyone. My name is Matt, I'm the TAS UX teacher on Bath. I have uh, some questions here people usually ask. Um, the simplest one is uh, how to keep my glass door clean, uh, showered glass door clean. So the first thing that you need to think about it is to do routine cleaning. And by that, I don't mean leave it there for years because then it turns to a frosted one like mine. <laughs> so it's a good idea to do a routine cleaning. And by that, I mean um, in a in a suburban area, in an urban area, in a rural area, you should uh, do it every six months. In um, a kind of a close to coastal area, you should do it every three months. And um, in um, harsh areas and pollutant areas, you should do it in every one month. But then the question comes, to how to do it, because uh, uh, I can just get a squeegee and clean the glass door. It's uh, usually we do that because it's the easiest way to do it. There are two types of glasses usually you have in your shower, uh, uh, in your bathrooms. The first is the uh, regular glass. Uh, there is no coating on it and uh, when there is no coating uh, it's usually um, easier to clean and there is a coated glass that uh, are sensitive to uh, scratches. Uh, it's a good idea to do not use uh, uh, squeegees because uh, um, it will scratch the coating if you have on the glass and if you really, really want to use it because of the uh, ease, then just use the silicone types. There are different squeegees. One is the silicone type and those are better to use. Um, when you want to do the cleaning on your glass, uh, it's a good idea to leave it to cool to touch because if you do it um, in a direct sunlight, for example, you will leave a streak on the glasses. I remember the first time I was doing it. Um, you can do the uh, coating on your glass, regular glass yourself. Uh, there are liquids that you can apply. I remember when I was doing it the first time, it was really sunny day and the sun was coming from the a window direct on the glass and I was trying to apply the coating on the glass and I couldn't do that. Then I realized that it's not the good way to do it. You need to let it be cool and also you need to um, wet the glass first. Um, uh, if it is dry, you will leave streaks on the glass. So just wet it and then try to clean it. So if um, you can do it in, in a, uh, out of sunlight, then that would be okay, but you need to, to wet the surface. The other thing is that don't use the uh, abrasive material on the glass because uh, you will definitely damage the glass. Sometimes we use diluted vims on the countertop to clean the spot, but never use an abrasive on the glass because uh, it will be uh, damaged. Uh, if you have um, as a, if you have a kind of uh, deposits on the glass, uh, the good idea is to remove it fast so it won't remain on the glass for a long time. 
Then the other thing is that do your glass cleaning from top to the bottom. So don't, uh, don't do it from the bottom to the top. It's, it's unusual to do it. But if you do it because from bottom to the top, from the top stuff comes down, you will uh, have uh, deposits on the glass. And then the question is that, what should I use to clean my glass? Uh, uh, it's a common question I'm facing all the time. And is, uh, do you have any idea about it? It's, uh, it's just uh, using uh, uh, vinegar is this. The best one is the one part vinegar and 10 part water. Mix them up and then use it with the glass and uh, clean it. The other thing that you can use is uh, isopropyl, isopropyl uh, alcohol, one part plus one part water, and then you can use that to clean the glass as well. Don't use it on the mirrors because that will most likely damage your mirror. Uh, for, for the mirror, they suggest to use the denatured alcohol uh, with a piece of cloth and drop some denatured alcohol on top of it and then wet the glass and then clean it with cloth. And if you are using it on the mirror, make sure that you not touch the back of the mirror um, and also the edges of the mirror because your glass, your mirror will be damaged. Um, if you are using uh, a regular glass, it's a good idea to um, apply a repellent coating yourself if you can. If you are doing it, there are bottles in the market you can use. And if you are doing it, you need to make sure that the air circulation is good. So you need to open the windows and doors and then do it out of the sunlight again, not like my, me, and then uh, it will be okay. If you do applying the repellent, that remains about six months to a year. So it's a good idea to reapply it every year. And uh, Try if you are if you are you decide to do not use squeegees, which is a good idea. Then use a, a cloth that it is um, uh, lint free, so you won't uh, scratch the the glass. So, um, do you have any questions so far? Okay. The other question that I'm facing is that how hard is to replace my vanity? Uh, if I want to use a new vanity and remove the old one and put the new one. If you are doing it yourself, um, make sure you have someone with you because uh, sometimes vanities are heavy and you may hurt yourself. I was in a situation that um, there was nobody at the job site and uh, the customer didn't do the plumbing uh, right, so uh, they needed to redo it. So I, uh, we had to change the schedule completely. Then I was by my own and uh, there was a vanity of 72 inches, something like that. And it was a particle board. Uh, and uh, I had to do it myself, and it was not floor mount, it was wall mount. So it's pretty hard to lift it up and put it on the wall, screw it. But if you have to do it, then you do it because you are in rush, you don't want to lose the time, and you have other things to do. And then you hurt yourself without knowing it. So it's a good idea first to have someone with you all the time. If your contractor is doing it, then it's safe to do it. Besides that, there are different vanities. So if you are removing a vanity and replacing with a similar one, similar size, then it shouldn't be that hard, even if 
you want, you can do it yourself. Uh, usually the plumbing remains the same place. You don't have to do electrical jobs, so it will be still okay to do it. You need to uh, use a razor blade or knife to uh, cut the silicone and um, uh, usually vanities are screwed to the studs. So you need to remove the screws, take the vanity out, take the top out, and, and the tops are usually separate from the vanity. So you need to cut the silicone under the countertop, remove the top, uh, detach the faucet, detach the drain line, remove it and put the next one in, and, and reverse the job that you need. Um, if you are replacing it with a bigger vanity, for example, then, um, and if you have, you decide to do rather than one thing, two things, then everything will change because uh, then you have to do lots of plumbing and uh, likely, if you, if you put two sinks, for example, you need to have two drain lines, two faucets for the water supply, and uh, then beside that, you have, uh, you may not see it, but you have a pipe behind the wall that is called uh, um, uh, a ventilation or, or vent pipe, actually. And that wind pipe can be dried or wet winds and this kind of stuff. And then you need to call the plumber to come and put the drain lines for you and the vent line, wind pipe, and also the, um, the water supply. And, and uh, you need to put an uh, electrical uh, switch, probably, electrical uh, receptacles. Uh, GFCI, and you need an electrician and, and a plumber. Installation is still okay, you can do it yourself or the contractor can do it, but these are the things that you need to consider. The, thing, the other thing is that, do you want to go with wall-mounted vanities? If you decide to go with that and the wall-mounted vanity is heavy, then you may want to consider to put supports under the vanity as well. There are specific supports in the market. You can buy it online. They attach on the side of your studs. Uh, so you need to remove the drywall, attach it to the side of the stud, and then under the cabinet, especially if your cabinet is, for example, a stone around it and this kind of stuff, those are heavier stuff. So you need to take care about that part too. If it is uh, a floor mount vanity, then it's easier. Sometimes you, uh, you have a, an old bidet and you want to close it up and use a, a toilet with a washlet, for example, on top of it. And then you close off that old bidet and then you extend your vanity. Likely you put a... Um, uh, kind of uh, closet or pantry next to it as well, not pantry, a uh, 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 tower next to it as well. Uh, so these are the things that you need to consider regarding removing uh, vanity. I see no question. And the other question is that, yes, multiple questions, yes. Um, if I have in my existing old bathroom vanity, uh -huh. um, you know, 29 inches off the floor is my, my top size, can I just jump to, like, the new version of, like, a 36-inch vanity and still be comfortable with it? Well, or should the, I go with, like, a wall-mounted vanity or find something that's in between? Is it, he said, uh, 29 inches off the floor? Yeah. So it's kind of a wall-mounted vanity, I guess or pedestal. I'm, I'm not sure if I get it correctly. No, like in, a, in Toronto, all, all the homes are typically, you know, 120 to 80 years old for the most part. A lot of them have still um, like 29, 30-inch height vanities, right? And oh, the height of the vanity itself. Yeah. Yes, if, if the height is 29 inches, yeah. um, uh, there is one thing there that oh, 
the drain line still can stay there because you have room in the, in the vanity inside, so you can extend the pipe and the P-trap will go the same location, most likely. You don't have to do anything with that. If you bring the height up, and uh, then you just need to consider, to my understanding, it should be okay because the pipeline is coming still inside too, and you just need to connect the hose of the faucet to those pipes, and the drain will remain there. So increasing the height of the vanity shouldn't be that much an issue, but if you reduce, you want to reduce the height, I guess nobody does that these days, but if you want to increase it, it shouldn't be that much of an issue. Do you recommend going and like from a, an existing smaller vanity and just jump into like these days? You know, yes. 32, 33, 36. Yes. Uh, I would say almost all the vanities that we sell these days are 34 inches. And then the top can be 34 to 34 and a half. And the top is uh, three quarter of inch, one and a half inch, two inch, three inch, depending on the uh, customer taste. But yes, I would say 100% of the vanities these days are 36 inches high after countertop. So that's, that should be a good idea, otherwise, if, you shouldn't do the renovation, maybe at all. So that's right. Any questions? Sorry, one, one question. Uh, in terms of trends and what you see from a utility, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. 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 From a utility value, like, is there anything to consider with the same, like an undermount sink versus an overmount? Uh, the things, there are different things in the market these days. Um, the newest model of the things that are coming into the market these days are the composite integrated things. Those are like uh, the, uh, you see the um, kitchen things, the composite kitchen things, which is called granite things. Those are coming into the, a bathroom market as well. Those are integrated one piece and which are nice or you can use an undermount sink as well. There are glass sinks for countertop that are made uh, in Europe and you can order it in any size. Price range is about, um, for a 60 inches vanity is about three to 4,000 just the countertop. So there are different tops that you can buy. And also you can use a vessel sink on top of a countertop if you like to do, to do so. Uh, Energy-wise, I'm not sure what is your specific question about it because we are opening the faucets, you are using the water, hot and cold mix, and then it shouldn't be a difference. There shouldn't be a difference for the uh, top mount or vessel sinks or the undermount sinks. The undermount sinks, Beside the composites, there are artificial material gel coated. Those are sensitive to scratches. And also you can use a regular countertop plus an undermount sink, porcelain sinks, which is a very common, I would say, 85, 80% of the people go with countertops with undermount sinks. Thank you. No problem. One question. Uh, I'm facing, last question I, I'm facing here is that, um, can I use large format ties in my bathroom? That's a, an important question that's very technical. Um, you cannot use uh, large format ties in your bathroom if the span of your joists under the floor, under the um, uh, plywood, is very large, so if the span is over 16 feet, it's uh, shaky, you cannot use it. If the span, if the distances between the joists are large, mostly you can use it. But there is a online uh, calculator, so you can put, because uh, the deflection in your joist cannot be more than a certain amount, 
L over, for example, 364 um, for the uh, porcelain tiles and L over 720 for the uh, natural stone tiles. So large format tiles are over 15 inch on one dimension. Any tile that is on one dimension, 15 inch and up, is a large format tiles. These days people use even 24 by 48 inches tiles. And for using those, you need to make sure your joists are okay so they can, it can, they can tolerate the load and the deflection is limited. So you can, you can use them. The other thing is that you need to make sure that your floor is flat, otherwise you can't use them. Two, the walls, if you are putting on the walls, the walls are, need, needs to be flat as well. So um, it's a good idea to be flat, otherwise you will be having hard time to install the tile on the, on the wall. So I'm almost done. If you have any questions, I am here to answer you. Do you guys have any questions? For Matt? Uh, yes, yes, I have one question. Uh -huh. Where does a budget start for a four-piece bathroom? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. What's that? What is a starting budget for a four-piece bath? A four-piece bath, let me tell you what you, you want to put a standing up shower, I guess. Yes. Um, for your standing top, a toilet and a vanity, I guess. Correct. Okay. So let's put it this way, separate, private, one piece, one by piece, one piece. So uh, uh, for your standing top these days costs you around 1700 to 20 to, to 3500 Um It was the, the freestanding top you could get about 1100 two years ago, but now it's uh, over 17, 1800. Um, a vanity, what size of the vanity? One sink. One sink, I would say a 36 inch, for example, vanity costs you between 1200 to 3500, depending on the products that you select. A toilet, uh, a branded one like, um, like total cost you around 700 with the, with the um, wash that costs you around 2600, between 700 to 2600. Um, but then you need to pay the craftsman to put in the tile and to- That's right. I would say between, depending on who you are hiring, it costs you around 8,000 to 13, 14,000, depending on their expertise. So they charge you based on, oh, there are people who are newer in the market and you know, do cheap jobs, but then you will face the consequences. And there are expert people who do not do cheap jobs and they, they are expensive and then in return, you will be safe. You don't have to, you know, be worried about anything in the future. So if, for example, a tile, a tiler do a bad tile for you and it cracks, they don't leave, for example, um, uh, uh, contraction and expansion joints on a big uh, space, for example, and those come together under high pressure and breaks down, then you have to remove all your tile, put it back again. Uh, but I'm guessing your, your bathroom is not that big, it's medium-sized bathroom. So that's not a big deal, but I'm just giving you an example. Thank you. No problem. Any questions? Any other questions, please? Matt? Thank you so much. I, I had a question. As far as labor rates are concerned, when you say come down to a uh, uh, to, to get a quote, what would the labor rates be before you uh, start getting yourself into trouble as far as what a labor would want that's qualified? 
If I get your question properly, uh, you are asking me what would be a proper rate for, a, well, for example, a, a for... A couple of years ago when we, we went to a, a seminar and one of the contractors said he wouldn't get out of bed for less than $200 an hour. And I assume that the basic rate of not getting out of bed is much higher now. And I just wondered uh, what it was as far as labor rates are concerned. Uh, I would say labor was about 6,500 to 12,000 a couple of years ago. Now you can consider it about 8,500 to 14,000. Fine. Fine, thank you. That's Thank you. Um, anyone else? Any more questions here? Are we good? I will be here if you have any other questions. I, I'll be happy to help you. Thank you, guys. Thank have a good day. We're going to do this a little bit differently, uh, just because I know that we've got a couple of questions to answer, but at the same time as I know that you guys have more questions than uh, have been answered yet. Um, just to... Uh, to get back to the question about the top mount vanity, uh, the top mount uh, sink, I actually just wanted to, we use a lot of top mount sinks. Today they're not really top mount sinks versus what they used to be. Uh, now they are semi-vessel, they're full vessel sinks, they are just a different version. Um, in my opinion, as you know, a design firm and contractor, you have to really modify your vanity based on your sink choice. If you're going with a, a sink top that is like your kitchen counter, which is basically a 36 inch um, finished, then using a sink that is a drop-in is a great option. Um, I see it all the time where people will actually um, get into a sink where they decide later after they've already gone with their vanity and they just slap a you know, vessel sink on top and then if you slap a vessel sink on top, now your sink is even higher, and now you're like reaching into like a pot to, you know, to wash your hands, right? It's just super uncomfortable because um, some clients are coming from the, the old 30 or 32 inch vanity, and then sometimes jumping straight up into a 36 can be a little bit hard just because that's what you're used to, right? So um, that's always something to figure out when you're doing that. There's different uh, costs associated as well as where the plumbing needs to be and a variety of different things that you need to factor in as well as sinks are now deeper than they used to be. Um, you probably, if anybody's actually done their kitchen yet, um, has noticed that sinks are now standard at like um, nine or 10 inches versus they used to be standard at like seven. So um, especially when you get into condos, that's something that obviously um, pay attention to is or ask the person that you're working with if that's possible to upgrade in that way so it doesn't complicate things for your, your waste flow and stuff like that, um, factoring that in. Um, also, just to get back to uh, the questions about the bathrooms, uh, specifically when they sent out the questions, I did not pick that question because I didn't want to be that guy to have to answer it. But, um, I mean, as far as a four-piece, uh, we are not the cheapest guy out there. We specialize in design. All of our stuff is design-led. The thing is, is that obviously what you pick is going to vary substantially, right? And nobody ever wants to hear that. They just want to tell me what is the number that that I have to that I have to fork out, or you know, do I have to close my Swiss accounts, or whatever the situation is, right? To to get to get that bathroom, right? And. Um, a lot of people, when they get into a four-piece, they want the double sink, they want all the bells and whistles. And what I always tell people is that they typically start somewhere, um, for at least for our firm. So if somebody came to us and said, hey, you know, I want to do an inexpensive uh, you know, four-piece, we can do an inexpensive four-piece for somewhere around 45000 right? Everything included, your lighting, all the, all the bits and pieces, depending on the size of your bathroom. We don't do cookie cutter stuff. We do really cool, fun, uh, funky different designs and different things. And we're always about pushing the limits because I feel like a lot of people don't actually have enough fun with their bathroom. And I feel like people like to have fun and use colors and different kinds of things when they're doing a bathroom versus a space like their bedroom where they just want to calm down and get some sleep. But um, 
they can range. I mean, obviously, we're right now we're getting into a difference in you know price hikes that weren't around previously, and so the prices is, are completely changing. But then, um, when people usually get into the higher end of you know the freestanding tubs and which typically requires a larger bathroom and more plumbing and you know moving plumbing around that kind of a thing then you start to get into the you know the 55s you know even 60 depending on whether you're going with you know large slabs or whether you're going with you know smaller tiles if you're going with borders if you're going with um, you know patterns that kind of thing so it's just something to keep in mind is that obviously um, there is no necessarily um, you know, price for an hour that you're gonna pay your guy. It's more about you know, paying for what you're going to, to get and what you're going to receive with, with your project. So um, I wouldn't worry so much about that, but what I would do is contact somebody who you feel is qualified to do what you want to do and then find out from them what is it that, that you can expect. One, one thing that we're playing with is uh, with, with funky colors and different kinds of options, um, like what you're seeing here, is the option of going with even themed bathrooms. Like what would it be like if I went steampunk or something with my bathroom? But then you take it to a whole different level of cost, right? Because it's, not, it's no longer just a regular bathroom. So that's something to factor in when you're, when you're looking at um, what it is that you're going to, to pay for your bathroom. Because is it good enough to just get the monochromatic bathroom that everyone else is getting, or to go with an older style of, of subway tiles, unless you love subway tiles? But that's something to factor in when you're going through the whole, the whole thing. So to get to my questions, let's, let's get to my questions. Um, so the benefits of renovating a bathroom. So actually, People renovate bathrooms for different reasons. I believe that my clients actually renovate their bathrooms because they want a new bathroom. Like, does anybody here want a new bathroom? Maybe. So, I mean, if you don't want a new bathroom and you just want to increase the value of your house, you can do that as well. But it's something that I would not suggest to somebody to, you know, to willingly spend whatever they're gonna spend, whether it's a three piece or a four piece or whatever it winds up being without actually enjoying that bathroom because you can always just kind of come up with a concept for the next guy and move on without it. Um, now, the most expensive part of a bathroom remodel typically is your shower, right? Your shower, your tub, your tile, that kind of thing. It all kind of gets lumped in as one because people don't typically separate the cost of like, here's the floor, here's the walls, here's the shower, here's the, you know, the base that you're building, that kind of thing. Um, you know, why somebody would want to use um, like a shower or a tub is a very personal question. You know, I personally, just the size of me, I'm not very big, but you know, it's, you know, for my size, it is not very comfortable for me to sit on the floor of my shower and wash myself. So it's, you know, if, if you're looking for a, a tub as an option for, you know, bubble baths and different things, the bubbles don't stay, on the floor in my shower. So, um, you know, it's a personal thing. Some people say, well, resale value, um, we get this a lot. People that have a condo, it's a one bedroom or, um, you know, or it could be a three bedroom. And, you know, it's, you know, they've got one or, you know, even sometimes people have like five bathrooms and they're like, well, do I really need a tub? The answer is no, if you don't need a tub. If the next guy needs a tub, he can put a tub back in if he wants to, but it's up to you guys if you feel that you need a tub. And this is what we're basically, um, the dilemma that people have is like, well, I don't want a tub, but I'm keeping a tub for the next guy. But I'm planning on staying here for 10 or 15 years, so I'm gonna tough it out for 10 or 15 years, even though I've got bad knees or whatever the situation is, and I'm gonna hop over the tub every time, right? And which is silly, right? I mean, do what you guys want to do, and you know, spend the money that you feel is necessary to spend to get what you actually need. And um, my last question is for small bathrooms. How long does it take? So I actually met with someone yesterday who had uh, filled out our renovation guide, which I'll talk about in a second. 
And on there, they said that their expectation was that their bathroom, being a small bathroom, was going to take three to four days. So for some people, that is, you know, it seems reasonable. I mean, if I only have one bathroom, how long can I go without a bathroom in my, in my condo, right? Like three or four days seems like all I can tolerate, right? Like I don't want to move in with my in-laws. I don't want to, you know, like, you know, park myself on a couch somewhere, right? Like three or four days is all, all I can part with, right? But it doesn't matter how long I think it should take. It matters how long what I actually need is going to take. And that's something that, that you have to also figure out with what your list of expectations are for this, this whole project. In my experience, someone can do a typical like five by eight, five by nine, which is a common bathroom. Um, a lot of the bathrooms that you're seeing um, on here are that similar size where um, people are getting into a small condo bathroom. It's what they consider to be like my small bathroom. And, um, and you can do those guys in typically in two weeks, depending on whether you're subbing everything out or not. If the guy's subbing everything out, there will be delays because there's gonna be cleaning up in between the trades and getting everything ready for the next guy depending on how much of your house he's allowed to consume with all the materials and tools and everything else outside of your bathroom. So um, obviously, you know, switching in between trades can be a problem as well. And so that's something to factor in, but typically, um, you know, two weeks to get in and out plus your glass is usually good. Some guys will take a little bit longer depending on uh, whether you just want a basic bathroom or you want something you know, fancier. I've talked to people that um, other companies that take six months to do a bathroom. And now I can only imagine what that bathroom looks like when it takes six months to remodel the bathroom. But um, that's not usually what people wanna hear. I mean, if you're not living in the house, it's not a big deal, but otherwise, you know, Less is better, if you can. So uh, one of the things I wanted to basically just talk to you about quickly is our renovation guide. So our renovation guide is something that I feel a lot of people need. It's something that regardless of who you work with, it's going to help you get all your ideas down on paper. So whether you're looking for a tub or a shower or a top mount sink or an undermount sink or a higher vanity, a lower vanity, a um, you know, a smaller budget, a larger budget, a four-piece bathroom, a three-piece bathroom. I want to, you know, take my existing vanity and make it taller or make it wider, go with more sinks, whatever the situation is. This can all be in there as well as all the questions that you guys don't actually think about. So a question I get all the time, being that we are kind of a hybrid between a, a design firm and a remodeling firm, is do I really need a designer? Do I really need to pay that cost for that extra line item you know, of a designer? And the answer is, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's up to you guys, right? And you know, if you guys need 2Ds or 3Ds to be able to put it all together, if you guys need you know, help with selections, if you guys need stuff like, um, you know, and from the contracting side even, like some people say, well, do I really need a contractor or can I just throw that vanity in by myself? I mean, you know, my back's not too bad and you know, I got my brother-in-law, I could you know, grab a case of beer and, and he can help me throw it on the wall. But at the same time, it's like, you know, this is actually designed to figure out what are your needs so that when you guys are looking for it, just like Mike Holmes was talking about, do your research. This is gonna help you be able to bring your list to those people and say, this is my list of what I'm expecting. Whatever the expectations wind up being, there's a lot of different um, nuances that we've got built into it. But be able to go there and say, this is what my list is. Can you do what is on the list? And if they can't do what's on the list, you don't have to worry about including them in your search because you already know what it is that you're looking for. And too many times it happens where Someone will do a renovation, get to the end of the renovation, and you know, they love the guy in the beginning, and then they don't at the end, and they get there, and then they realize that you know, it could have all been different because this guy really didn't have any of the things I actually cared about. And, and that's what this is gonna help you prevent, is by finding the guys that are actually capable of doing those cool renovations that you guys are looking for. Does anybody have any questions? Yes? I'm at the very, very beginning stage, like the first yeah. thing I'm thinking about for bathroom, 
And uh, is it cost efficient if I go source up materials myself, let's say Home Depot's got a sale on this, and I start piecing it? Or is it just better to, at cost-wise to just go with the contractor, who gets contractor pricing, and just says, these are the choices that I have, let's work with that. What is the most cost efficient way of approaching the materials? Um, so, jokingly, I told someone the other day that asked me a similar question, um, that I could actually, they had mentioned that there was a, that, um, that they were working with somebody, um, I think it was like a cabinetry company that was going to walk them through certain things over the phone. And I said, you know what, no problem. I mean, if we can, you know, hook you up with all the different bits and pieces, have it delivered to your living room, and I can walk you through the installation on a phone, right? And you guys can just install it all yourself, right? And so, but there is some truth to it because a lot of times people will try to do all the bits and pieces themselves and to try to save a couple of bucks. And then you have to decide what is it that you can do on your own, right? Sorry, I, I meant yeah? somebody is going to put it all together. Yes, no, no, I know that, I know that. But um, so for us, um, the, uh, the design is a part of what we do. So this product selection, for instance, is a part of what we do, right? So the thing is, is that you can go and make those selections on your own and bring it to the person. Sometimes people will, you know, they'll try to throw the tile in their trunk and haul it back to the house and save a couple of bucks, right? Um, some companies will do that. We are not typically the kind of company that would do that just because the warranty doesn't really work for us because, you know, something breaks down and it becomes, well, whose problem is it? Was it the labor? Was it the, you know, the joists weren't running the right direction for the panel on the floor and it cracked? Or whatever the situation is and, you know, and, or, you're like, oh, there's this extra cost. Where does this extra cost come from? Well, you know, the tile went from a, a 12 by 12 to, you know, a, a 24 by 24, or whatever the situation was. Now there's a pattern that there wasn't a pattern when it was quoted, whatever the situation is, right? Um, there's a variety of different ways to look at it, and there's different pieces that you can actually select in order to get those costs down. The thing is, is that um, one thing that I would recommend is that when you go through the renovation guide, to look at even the, um, the trade side of it and figure out what is important, like from your point of view, on the design side. Can you do that stuff by yourself and do you need a firm that offers that? Because obviously, you know, to the point of like expensive guys, I mean, you know, we're probably one of those expensive guys. And so the thing is, is that if, if a customer doesn't need what we offer, then there's no point of going to us for the design, for the help of, of getting those items. But at the same time, is sometimes people say, well, you know what, um, my brother-in-law has, you know, he's, he's a plumber, so he can come over and do the plumbing or he can do, you know, whatever the, the bits and pieces are. And so um, our, our guide is actually designed to figure out, do you need the contractor? Do you need the design help? Do you need the shopping help? Do you need all the different bits and pieces? And some guys will say, well, you know what, I'll give you my, you know, um, like you can get my discount and go to the store and buy it yourself or whatever the situation is or, you know, or even like you said, a, there's a sale at Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever and, um, and sometimes you can find the stuff, right? The, the guys who, who do this for a living know the difference between the stuff that is on sale and the stuff that's not. And um, just like Daniela said, she carries Moen as well. I don't think of it as her carrying Moen because the Moen that she carries is a higher end than the stuff that's in the box stores. So I don't really think of it as Moen because when I think of Moen, I think of typically, um, you know, Home Depot is a huge supplier of Moen, right? And so, and everything with that. So it's just something to figure out when you're going through the whole thing is to do enough research to make it worthwhile. Yes? Do you need a designer if you're keeping all the fixtures on the same spot? Yes. Wow. <laughs> um, so, you're talking to a, you know, like a hybrid design firm, so uh, I would say definitely yes, but the thing is is that it just depends on what you need, right, what you actually are planning to do. Some people, they kind of know what they already, you know, what they're planning on doing. I've already got kind of an idea for my tiles. I've already got an idea for my vanities. I'm shopping it around, whatever I'm doing, and so they don't need anything else, right? They're just like, hey, I'm good, right? So you might not need a design firm, but sometimes people want to, so people that come to us won't come to us because we're a design firm, 
They'll come to us because we're a renovation company. And they say, you know what, I really wanna do uh, my kitchen, my bathroom, whatever the situation is. And so we'll help them with that piece of the design, not the entire design. So they're not spending quite as much money because they're only paying for what they're actually getting. So you might just need help with selections, right? Maybe I wanna put a pattern on my wall or you know, do something cool with an accent color or you know, something like that. And you might not actually need help with design, you know, as far as what people normally want, right? I mean, does your husband wanna go shopping with you for all the tiles and all, give you the input and everything else? So sometimes you need somebody who can do that. Somebody who can just affirm that you're heading in the right direction and that if you're working with cool colors, that you're not incorporating warm colors that are gonna, you know, kind of mess up the balance of what you're trying to do. Does that answer your question? My wife and I watch TV programs yep. and it suddenly occurred to me after a while that there's no relationship between uh, what they say they spend on it and what they get. And of course I realize underneath the programs it says there's up to a dozen uh, sponsors that mm -hmm. sponsored that program and supposedly they gave all kinds of deals. And I just wondered how realistic that was because it tends to uh, cause uh, everybody to go astray as to what expected for the dime that they spent. So I just wondered if you'd comment on this. So um, that's true. I mean, for the most part, I think they're starting to, um, and you're seeing that even with, um, you know, some of the, um, like the homes related shows and stuff like that as well too, where um, they're starting to get more into kind of the real cost of different things. Um, I was watching uh, the other day, um, uh, love it or list it. And they were like, oh yeah, you know, my budget for a house is a million dollars. Right, and they were like, okay, well, a million dollar house is a, you know, typically a two bedroom or whatever the situation is. And the guy was like, well, you know, I'm looking for a little bit more than that. And I don't even know where it was filmed. But the thing is, I was like, finally, you know, it's not like something in like Pasadena for like $200,000, right? And then somehow they're like, you know, fix it up and flip this thing for 15,000, right? Because it's unrealistic to the homeowner, right? As well as it becomes a huge hassle for us because we're trying to educate you and you're like, no, I saw it on TV, the guy said, All right? And, but that's the thing is that obviously, as much as I'd love to be, you know, sponsoring people's rentals and stuff like that, it's, you know, it's not the reality. And I mean, there is sometimes the situation where you leave your home on those TV programs and they do whatever it is that you, um, you know, that you need, but they do it in a way that they can, you know, cut the cost down or whatever the situation is. The, the episode I happened to watch uh, the other day was talking about how they were, you know, they were opening up this, this family room and then it was like, oh, this beam has to be moved and now it has to, you know, go downstairs and put in posts and do all this other stuff and here's all the cost and it's an extra $5,000, right? And the guy was like, an extra $5,000, right? But I was like, that's what people need to see. Right, it is like when you, you, know, you open it up and you're like, well, you know, who knows? It looks like this beam goes all the way through. But then you know, they wind up changing it to a steel beam instead of a wood beam that could go a little bit longer and you know, it changed the whole scope, right? But I think that's what people need to really realize is that not everything on TV is what it seems, but at the same time, as I mean, obviously it's fun to watch, it's nice entertainment, all that kind of stuff, but it's, you have to do enough homework to make it worthwhile because for someone who thinks that they're going to do a renovation and I mean, people still come to me every day and say, you know what, I wanna do my basement and we don't really get into basements, but a lot of times people still have it in their mind, I can get a basement done for $30,000. And it's just, people don't want basement finishes anymore. People in, in every area of their homes they want nicer finishes. They want their basement to feel like their main floor or whatever, you know, whatever area that they want it to feel like and they, or they wanna go the custom man cave or the, you know, the movie theater or whatever the situation is. And then you know, the cost goes out the window. So a lot of times people try to compare it to what they see on TV and you know, maybe it doesn't line up with the square footage or you know, they can't hire that guy whatever the situation is, right? You know, they just don't have the network power behind them. And, you know, and so that kind of varies the cost as well. 
But um, I always, the reason I actually didn't want to answer the question about uh, costs with renos is because everybody has different markups. Everybody has, um, you know, different overheads and factors that they have to factor in as to whether, how they run their business and how they do everything. So the best thing to do is to, to talk to people that you're actually thinking about renovating with, people that you're getting along with, people that are giving you questions, you know, giving you the answers to the, the questions that you guys have. Then, you know, formulate an opinion based on what it is that uh, that is the proper information for your renovation that you're getting. I just had one more uh, question. Um, uh, most of the contractors say they can do it, and then when you check into them, you see what they've done, but you can't see behind the walls, so you're really no better off. And I'm not sure how to end the question actually. <laughs> <laughs> and, and as far as you said you're more expensive so uh, I'm not getting into anything personal but what percentage in the more expensive as compared with someone that's less expensive like I just wonder what more expensive means in terms of the percentage so uh, the reason that I said I'm, I'm more expensive is I'm I'm more expensive compared to what people on average are thinking they're looking for. But I don't think I'm more expensive. I think that in two years, when you're renovating with us, that you're gonna want us to still be around so that we can service your warranty, right? And so I'm thinking that if I charge the right markup and I you know, um, am honest with what is actually overhead and not try to sweep it into my family's food budget, that you're gonna get the kind of renovation you're looking for I'm not going to cut any corners, and at the same time as I'll be able to be around in you know a year and a half when I will come back for a walkthrough on your renovation. So, to me, you're getting what I can give you, right? You're getting it for as low as I can possibly get it to give you what I need to give you based on what you've asked for. So, to me, I'm not more expensive. So, it's not about necessarily you know, is this guy 5% more expensive than the last guy or whatever the situation is? Because uh, we actually did, we did a talk at, at, um, at a show recently and um, I basically used the analogy that you meet with the first guy and the first guy says, and you say, okay, I wanna do my kitchen. And then it starts out, it's like, okay, the kitchen. So the guy says, okay, I can do a kitchen. He goes away, does a quote for a kitchen. The second guy, um, you know, you meet up with him and he says, and you say, I wanna do a kitchen. And he says, okay, well, have you thought about doing the flooring through your main floor? And you're like, no, why don't you give me a quote for that, right? So then the third guy comes in and because, you know, people have over the years got it in their head, I should get three quotes and whether that's relevant or not is besides the point. But you, third guy comes in and you say, okay, I want to do the kitchen and my flooring. And then he says, well, have you thought about opening up this main floor? And he goes away. And you're like, yeah, do it. Like, I wanna see what this is gonna be. And then you're like, well, the first guy, he was super cheap. This last guy, way expensive, right? But it's like, they were all giving you something completely different, right? And I think that's what people have to really understand is what are they actually getting? What is considered to be an extra by that company? And what is the true cost of the renovation? As well as that um, someone had asked earlier about how long does stuff last? And when can I expect you know, it to be, you know, what's that churn ratio and that kind of thing. And I mean, in my opinion, most of the stuff on renovations, uh, if you choose a good product, usually lasts you about 20 years. After that, you want it out of there anyway. So I mean, most people renovate every 20 years regardless. But the thing is, is that it's, you know, you really have to just kind of figure out what is it that's going to be the cost versus the price ratio. Right, what is the price, which is today, versus what is the cost, which is the lifetime of going back and fixing that problem and fixing that problem and fixing that problem and changing your vanity or doing whatever you need to do or hunting around, not using your bathroom, trying to find a cartridge for something you can't use, right? And because you wound up going on the cheaper end of the project, right? And so that is the actual cost of the renovation. So you save the money initially, but you spend it over and over and over again versus being able to have a renovation that lasts you for 20 years and you replace it because you're a little bit tired of it. Not because, and because you know, styles have changed and that kind of thing, not because it's falling apart and it's all moldy and whatever the situation is. 
what I was thinking, as far as the labor rate for, mm -hmm. say, a contractor is concerned, yep. what would provide him with sufficient, reasonable incentive to come up to your place to do the work continuously as, as opposed to just a general run-of-the-mill labor rate where they spend maybe two or three hours at your place and go to the next place. So... so um a common thing that happens is that people always say, why doesn't this guy stay here, you know, like put a cot outside the bathroom door and stay here until he's finished, right? And unfortunately, that's just not the way it usually happens. Um, the best incentive, in my opinion, is that when you're tempted to say, well, could you do it for 10% cheaper cash, that you just don't say that and just assume that you're getting a quality guy that's probably not gonna do a cash job anyway, so he's not trying to make up the difference somewhere else. That would be my recommendation. Thank you very much, I'll let everybody go home now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sam.